What we're seeing here is our 1996 GMC pickup truck with a homemade for free, did not cost one penny, headache rack rigged up to haul propane tanks. The reason for this being we used to, we live off grid and our road into our area was flash flooded out. The concrete apron was taken out and it's impassable at the time for the time being. We can still get to town. It's an extra hour and a quarter's drive to do it. Slow down by the International Border Road. Now, prior to this flash flood, we always hauled the propane for our place with the car, a Subaru Outback. Lay the tanks down on the back with the hatch, hatchback, and lay the back seat down, and it was fine. But the Subaru is ailing a bit right now, and it's also maybe not the best vehicle for the border road. You look out of place down there in uh, no man's land if you're driving anything but a truck. So I need to haul quite a few of these tomorrow. I have to go pick up a third one. You'll see these are 100 pound tanks and you can see that there is enough room in the middle there to add a third tank of the same size which is my stepson's, my wife's son, Zach, and his family have just run out of propane over at their place. I'll be picking that one up and throwing some gas cans in here and various other things that pickup trucks are known for hauling. I wanted to show you, however, just a little bit of the scrap materials that we used to build this particular rack. Now, first of all, of course, you don't want anything crashing into the glass back here or tipping forward like you know a loose tank and that's why you need a rack and that's why it's called a headache rack is so you know you don't get a headache this particular rack I went through a lot of work mentally and finally dawned on me I already had pretty much a ready-made basis for a rack in this pallet this is actually a leftover pallet from a month or so ago it came out with a pallet of concrete that I used in building the porch that we added on to our home. So that's just sat in there three by four feet. It's three feet high, four feet wide. But you don't want, you have to have some way to keep the bottom from kicking out. Let me see. Uh, yes, there's one that shows. You see that bolt and washer down there? There are four of these across the bed of the truck. I just drilled a 17, 7 16 hole in each spot through the bed and tapped these quarter inch bolts with the big fender washers on them down in place. These were left over actually from some political signage from the last election that we did when we were supporting a candidate who is not voting as we would like now that he's been elected, but that's another story. Now this rug that you see here is one we have trashed from inside the house when we got flooded a bit. It's a little bit soggy, but I'm going to take it along and wrap Zach's tank with it so that it, the tanks don't rub against each other. Now, these two befores are simply here. Uh, these are put in just with 10 penny nails and angled back down so that they bump up against the tailgate. So the whole arrangement cannot come back on you. Forward is a main concern and that's what these little bolts address. So the bottom can't kick back which keeps this arrangement here from going forward. Other than that, in order, I didn't have any eye bolts on hand uh, to eye bolts here for these bungee cords would have been very good to have but we didn't have any on hand that were the right size but we had plenty of unused clothesline rope so you know you make a redneck loop right there and go from there now once again we had bungee cords enough but these didn't exactly match up right so we just cinched them up short throw a square knot in the middle of that and we're good to go now the only other remaining item and it's 
fairly important because you don't want to scratch these tanks up any faster than you have to and you don't want them rubbing against the wood of the headache rack so you can see here now this from the pressure this has already pulled a nail out a little bit but that doesn't really matter the main thing is that this rubber is leftover rubber from flooring that we used in the house it's scrap material I cut it five inches wide and strips just to go across the top here and also down at the bottom here. It's three eighths inches thick. That's enough to keep the rest of the wood from making contact with the tank and also to pad the tank where it does hit. So that's about it. It doesn't look like a whole lot of work. Surprisingly, it took a little while. It took a couple of hours to put this together. But we had everything on hand. Oh, uh, one little thing, one little, if you build one of these, or something like it, 10 penny nails can pull out. So one of these, I can't say which one, but one of these is really anged sharply down going in. And then there's one back here on the inside coming out also down. So if this board tries to pull out, it's pulling against a cross of these two nails and it's not likely to come too far loose until we can get back home with the load. Now you can see that we have a bungee across here just holding this forward also holding it right up against the front of the pickup bed. That's about it. We're good to go. I'll be heading out in the morning so I get back here before the afternoon thunderstorms if they come along I'll catch up to the roads and make them impassable and thanks for watching.